500 is being disrupted across the board right now. It's not just startups coming up, but it's also whole industries changing, collapsing, merging, working with customers that are changing. So who used to be the customers are now the competitors, and who used to be the suppliers are now the customers. So across the board, we see massive disruption, and I call it the, the death of big business as we know it, and I think there'll be something, something else after it. I don't know exactly what that will be, but I'm certain that the existing models are going to go, go away. The last 30 years, we've been able to constantly double the amount of computing power we have at the same cost. And while that sounds impressive, and I think we all have an idea of what that means, you know, we're sitting here with iPads, which is, of course, as fast as the computers we used to have that was heavy laptops. To really get a sense of the scale, the CPU that's inside an iPhone today, which cost around $300, cost $54 million in 94 when the US company, they bought a supercomputer that could do the same. Now think about how many things in the world that in less than 15 years falls from $54 million to $300. Um, that kind of value add, you don't really see anywhere else. And what's happening is, for the last 10 years, we've seen this as becoming faster computers, faster internet, faster phones, things we can sort of predict. And we think, I think, when we think in our head for the next 10 years, Oh yeah, it's just going to be even faster smartphones, it's going to be even smartwatches, you know, all of these things. But what's really happening is that Moore's Law is starting to bleed out in the physical world. Input into the supply chain. The fact that I used to invest 10% of my resources into R&D, I would get some returns around 10% better materials every year, 10% better products, was very predictable. I could invest in my supply chain, I could invest in my production, and I would get a certain outcome. But the problem now is input has become unstable. There are so, such huge jumps in technologies, in production methods, and so on, so my input is unstable. And to give you some ideas of that, Tesla completely circumvented the whole car manufacturing supply chain by using parts from computers in their cars. Because the innovation curve for computers was so much faster than the innovation curve for cars. That's the foundation of, of most of what Tesla they do, is they go to other technologies. Exactly the same thing that Elon Musk did with SpaceX, by the way. They use commoditized computer bots in their rockets rather than building very heavy duty, specialized things, which means his innovation curve is a lot faster. In the world around DAP, the, the world is changing very fast. You have a millennial workforce. 40% of the millennial workforce have used tablets or smartphones as their main computing device the last five years. Try to pop them in front of an SAP screen and see what happens. Where we come from is, is really with a very different idea. It's a different idea, not just from, from how the software should be run, but it's also a different philosophy about what should be the value or the output of the software. Because SAP is built to optimize the value, or not even optimize the value, to reduce the risk of one unit in the value chain, which is your company. The way we think about it is to say, you know, DHL, any kind of our customers, it's not about optimizing the value just for DHL. It's about optimizing the value for the whole value chain. And I think we are way too bad to think about what does the whole value chain mean until we see quality defects in a, costing companies their lives, until we see huge scandals in China around uh, milk powder that hasn't gone through proper you know, quality control. Then we think about the supply chain. Then we think about the value chain. And a lot of this is happening because the underlying processes is built for one company only, built for one internal thing. But today, modern supply chains are part of the company. They're part of the business process, and, and we're moving them so rapidly in and out. We have complete parts of our supply chain that's producing what used to be in-house, but we're not running our systems like they're part of us. Because the philosophy behind these big databases, the philosophy behind these big ERP systems is, it's your world and everybody on the outside is the enemy, we've got to fight.